So, so far in this course uh, I have discussed in details about the shear strength determination of different types of soils. We have talked about direct shear test, main shear test, track shear test of different types from direct shear test what parameters we get we have analyzed them from triaxial test what parameters we get we have analyzed them in details. We have discussed about the pore water pressures, how do they develop, what is the importance of pore water pressure parameters and how would you utilize these parameters including the shear strength parameters to characterize the soils of different types as an engineering material, how to do engineering on these materials. And then we switched over to earth pressure theory. All right. So, these were the basics of the geotechnical engineering 2 course or these were the basics of the materials like uh, soils of different types and what we have learned so far is how to understand their basic characteristics, how do they perform under different types of drainage conditions and loading conditions. Once we have studied all these things, the issue is where you are going to apply this knowledge. So, one part of the application of shear strength theory was earth pressure theory, which we discussed quite in details and uh, there we talked about different types of uh, retaining walls, how earth pressure gets mobilized on them. Uh, we talked about mostly uh, backfills with granular material and then a little bit on how to retain cohesive soil mass as a backfill material with a caution that cohesive material should not be utilized as a backfill material. So, we did all these analysis. Now, I am switching over from the basic concepts to the application part of geotechnical engineering too or you may say uh, this is how the practicing engineers would be using the concepts which have been laid down for understanding and basic characterization of the soil mass, engineering characterization all right. So, let me introduce now the concept of sheet piles. And these are sheet pile walls. All right. Now, you must have noticed that in the practice of geotechnical engineering, there are several situations where right of way or the right of property or the property line becomes a very big issue. So, so far what we have done is we have studied retaining walls. And these were mostly gravity retaining walls. Why gravity? Because the cross sections were very thick. The self weight itself was good enough to negotiate with the pressures which are going to come on the walls. So, what we did is we took heavy sections, you know, this is how we design a RE wall or retaining wall. on which the earth pressure is coming. So, many times as I said it is not possible to afford the luxury of space, ok. So, what would you like to do? But still you want to create a retention of the geomaterial. So, under these circumstances what we can do is we can switch over from gravity retaining walls which are basically rigid structures to flexible structures. All right. And these flexible structures are also capable of retaining soil for retention of 
अर्थ और स्वाइल ओके दिस कोड आल्सो बी वाटर दिस कोड आल्सो बी गैस और एनी सॉर्ट ऑफ लिक्विड केमिकल्स सो दी you know tanks which you see big big tanks where the petroleum is stored uh, they are also made up of thin sheets of steel truly speaking each element itself behaves like a sheet pile so when we talk about the flexible structures by definition opposite to a rigid gravity structure where the base weights were extremely high all right very very high these structures have very thin cross sections so in the process i can save this much amount of the space which is required if i consider this as a half of the retaining wall for construction purpose so a thumb rule says if the height of the retaining wall is about h the base width would be approximately 0.7h now i think you can realize if you are creating a 10 meter high wall for retaining the soil mass if you remember the back fill we have stored over here or we have so this was the ground level this is the back fill material so suppose if h is equal to 10 meters the base width of the base or the base width would be about 7 meters so everywhere you can't afford this type of a system gravity system apart from it requires too much volume of the concrete masonry or any compacted material all right so under these circumstances we go for a flexible structure for retention of earth soil mass water gas it could be any food grain also for that matter why not all right so depending upon what is that you are storing a sheet pile system can be designed so as a geotechnical engineer most of the time we deal with retention of earth soil mass water with very thin cross sections as the elements okay so suppose if somebody ask you a question uh there is a ground surface like this all right and this fellow wants to construct a farm house which is elevated so he says that i don't want to live over here i want a sort of a uh some height to be created over here all right so basically he wants to create or she wants to create a facility over here so the first question is how would you do this on piece of paper i could draw it very easily but how would you do in the practice so the best way to do in the practice is take these flexible structures which are retaining the material which are thin in cross sections and you insert them over here all right and then what i can do is i can fill up on the right hand side soil mass compact it okay by controlled compaction you have studied how to check the compaction of the soil in layers make it as a platform so this platform once it gets created of height h becomes a sheet pile wall because this happens to be a sheet pile look at the beauty i could have done the same thing by creating a retaining wall over here all right so if i would have done a retaining wall here how much space would have been eaten up so much correct so i get the same advantage of creating a retained soil mass on which i can create a facility just by using thin sections and hence the space can be optimized now i can realize that what is the application of this type of a construction in metros where the space is a luxury it's very expensive 
getting materials to make a retention system is extremely difficult. This idea seems to be workable. And I am sure the concepts of mechanics will tell you that this is a system which is very easy to analyze as well. So, what you are doing is you are using the concept of embedment of an element into the soil mass. So, this is the soil mass and trying to retain a bulkhead. In technical terms, this is defined as bulkhead. What is bulkhead? Bulk is the bulk of the material, volume of the material and head is that you have created certain height, alright. So, this becomes a bulkhead. So, in retaining walls, we used to use the word bulk, uh, sorry, uh, backfills, alright, which is retained by the retaining wall. When we adopt sheet pile, the terminology is bulkhead or the soil mass which is being filled up over here. This could be water also, okay. So, this is one of the facilities which I have created. I have created a elevated bulkhead for developing a property. There could be a different situation also. There could be a situation where I want to create a basement, let us say. A city like Bombay, you know, most of the infrastructure requires parking lots or some facilities, underground facilities. Let us say a cancer treatment facility in a hospital where you do not want to expose uh, the x rays or different type of isotopes which you are using on the patients to the atmosphere. So, these type of facilities are normally concealed, they are underground, all right. So, suppose if I want to construct an underground system. I could have used the retaining wall also there, but then as I said these are the negative aspects. The best thing would be use the sheet pile and what can be done? I can start excavating over here. So, if I start excavating, okay, I can remove this soil mass and I can create a facility over here. So, this material can be removed. And in other words, what I have done? I have created a underground facility. So, this becomes an underground facility. Is this okay? Which is nothing but a basement. So, now you are realizing we are the master of the subject. We are trying to use the concepts in such a manner that I can create any structure, I can create any facility. If I remember the concepts of stress paths which we did after triaxial testing. How would you use the concept of triaxial testing here, the stress paths? So, go back to the basics, take a point at a depth of z and define the state of stress. I can do the same thing over here also, this point, all right. And I would like to find out the state of stress at point 1 and at point number 2. So, if this is sigma v, sigma h, same thing is acting over here, sigma v, sigma h. What is the difference between the two situations? In this case, delta sigma v is greater than 0, loading case, correct? Now, delta sigma h could be whatever, okay. We have solved these type of problems. We have defined the stress paths for this condition, starting from a hydrostatic condition or from a different initial condition. If I construct a facility, I know how much is the height of this, I know the unit weight, I know what is the delta sigma v value. Delta sigma h may be 0, it could be positive it could be negative also depending upon how you are using this space. In this situation what is happening? When I am removing the material, delta sigma v becomes negative, removal. So, remember we talked about these conditions in the stress paths, okay. Active earth pressure, passive earth pressure, loading and unloading. We had drawn this long back. So, please go back and check those uh, lectures again. So, Coming back to the point, these thin elements 
are becoming very useful for construction of infrastructure, mostly in soft soils. But please remember one thing, in case of soft soils, these structures are not going to be permanent, they are only going to be temporary, alright. So, they are basically made for temporary retention of soil mass, that too not of very big heights, not very large heights. So, heights will be roughly 3 to 5 meters not more than that, but they are very useful for granular materials. Okay. And then we can design a system in such a manner that uh, I can achieve the certain height. Now you can realize intentionally, I did not talk about anything which is beneath the ground. But your concepts of engineering mechanics and solid mechanics and basic structural engineering will tell you that this is what is going to give you the embedment. And this embedment also mobilizes the moments. So, if you now start putting the mechanics here, what you will realize is this portion which is hanging up the ground surface would have a tendency to deflect on the left hand side, why? Because the simple logic says that this is the bulkhead which I have created is going to be under active earth pressure condition, so it is going to apply active earth pressure, fine. Now we will further discuss this later, but anyway just for a quick discussion, the embedment is going to come from the resistance which is being offered by the soil mass on the left hand side. So, the way I have shown an excavation if you do it like this, I am sure your reddening wall is going to fail. Now, this is where we have to apply the concept of optimization of the excavation from the face of the retaining wall. That means, there has to be a distance up to which this wall is going to be stable. That means, this much of the soil mass which I have created is going to apply a passive earth pressure on the retaining wall. So, truly speaking, these flexible units which we have inserted into the ground for creating retention or creating excavation, they are known as sheet piles. Why wall? Because these are the walls made up of the sheets and they run in several meters or hundreds of meters or tens of meters depending upon your requirement, alright. So, now you can visualize in the 3D. So, these walls will be running up to certain length as far as your property line is concerned and what we are doing is we are utilizing the concept of active and passive earth pressures to analyze the system and of course, the stress paths because without stress paths we cannot compute the incremental changes in the active and passive earth pressures. So, all these basics we have discussed in the class, fine. Now, what you require is the material property, the moment you know the C phi gamma, drainage conditions, submergence conditions, you can compute P A P P, we have done enough analysis. The whole aim is to find out D, so that I can say the total height of the wall is equal to H plus some factor you know, let us say uh, m times d. So, this is some factor which we will be discussing later on, alright. So, these are basic concepts. Another example, you might be doing, you might, might have observed, you know, trenching operations for laying the pipelines. So, this is the ground. And normally these pipelines which are carrying water or hydrocarbons, petroleum, they are normally buried up to a depth of 3 and a half to 5 meters because of different reasons. Number one to stop any type of burglary, you know, tapping of 
uh, fluids unauthenticated. So, suppose if I want to lay a pipeline over here, how would I do this? You have to do a trenching operation. Now, trenching means you have to remove this material. We studied the concept of Z critical. You remember what is Z critical? The height of vertical cut in a C5 soil. So, this is the unsupported height of vertical cut. So, this we have studied already. The idea is if I am going beyond if Z is greater than ZCR, what it corresponds to? This corresponds that you require some additional protection or support so that the trench remains stable. Otherwise, what will happen? Because of the earth pressure, the trench will cave in. Okay. So, this part also I am going to discuss uh, in subsequent lectures where I will be talking about why bracings are required, why supports are required, what is the concept of slurry trenches and how to make the trenches stable. And this will follow subsequent, another application of shear strength theory. So, I am sure you must be realizing that there are a lot of applications of shear strength theory. So, those of you who are under impression that this course is only conceptual or theoretical, I am sure that you must be realizing now this is becoming more and more practical now. You can create a situation using the concepts which you have studied so far, you can apply them and you can create a system infrastructure. So, coming back to this point, the best thing would be if this is the situation and you want to stop caving in, what I should be doing? The best way would be if this is the ground surface, you drive in two sheets, sheet piles, okay, and this much and remove the soil mass. And then find out where should I lay the pipeline or any utility for that matter, fiber optics cables, okay, underground pipelines, yeah, drilling wells. So, then you have to go much deeper, much, much deeper, correct. So, there could be any application for that matter. What you have to do is you use the same concepts. Now, these piles or these flexible structures or the elements are made up of different types of materials. Uh, these the type of materials or the materials used could be material used for making sheet piles. So, typically these are of stainless steel, with a very sharp cutting edge, alright. So, I will show you some videos today. So, suppose if this is a thin element and if I make a very sharp cutting edge over here, this becomes a typical sheet pile. So, what I have to do? Uh, keeping in view the stiffness of this element. I can push this element or the sheet pile inside the ground and this becomes a system like this. This is the art of installation of sheet piles and we are lucky that nowadays there are many specialized companies who are doing this work. Uh, design part you can take care of, analysis part you can take care of, execution part can be done by these companies, their expertise. These could be also made up of timber or wood. You must have seen in old constructions, people use wooden logs. A beautiful example of this would be dolphins. So, dolphins are the type of structure which are used for offshore structures, alright. So, stainless steel can be used, timber wood can be used, it could be a composite material also.
nowadays we have so many types of composites all right they can be used pvc can be used particularly for the landfills a big problem with the landfills is you know if there is a landfill a uh, lot of leachates come out so leachates are the chemical species which drain out or which come out of the landfills because of the percolation or rainfall okay so suppose there is a facility like this and i do not want the leachates to spread out into the geo environment because most of the time there will be water table here okay so i hope you can realize the moment these leachates seep down into the soil mass they will have a tendency to pollute the water table and the water table will be moving type we have done this in hydraulic conductivity when you are discussing about the permeability of the soil mass you know second th uh, fifth sixth lecture of c323 where we are talking about the hydraulic conductivity so if you have a moving or flowing water table this situation is going to be extremely hazardous what should we do then contain the leachates migrating out the simple example would be or simple solution would be insert sheet piles okay and in plan how it's going to look like it's going to look like a big space which you have created all right so i have created a confinement again by using small small segments of the sheet pile so you might be having the segments of let's say 2 to 3 meters wide and normally the lens is lens are about 5 to 7 to 10 meters depending upon the material which you are using i can put them together and i can create a coffer dam is this part okay so this is the design aspect how we are going to use the basic elements and the concepts of geotechnical engineering to create a retention system all right so these type of joints are especially provided by the manufacturers and then you can easily create such type of uh, systems which are almost watertight so this is something which is latest in the geotechnical engineering application where the landfills are also being contained by using uh, pvc sheet piles okay this becomes a typical coffer dam so coffer dams are normally a type of a structure which are created for doing offshore related construction where you want to divert the flow of water or you want to create a space which is free of water so suppose if there is a river which is flowing all right this is the river this is the river bed and i want to construct a bridge over here so for constructing the bridges we need the piers also so these are supports now where they are going to sit they are going to sit somewhere over here so this becomes the uh, foundation how would you create this foundation on blackboard or on piece of paper is very easy to do but suppose if you are doing it in the real system where the soil is somewhere here let us say this could be rock also what we will do is we will create a coffer facility somewhere like this so it resembles the situation what i have created over here so once you create a space drain out the water from here by using pumping
or say pump out the water and then this becomes a space where you can work. So, most of the bridges in the terrain where rivers are flowing, uh, they are constructed like this by creating a copper dam, diversion of water. So, I am diverting the water, creating a space which is free of water and you can work over there. So, I am sure you must be realizing there is a lot of application of simple concepts of geotechnical engineering, you know, starting from this to that end. So, depending upon the materials which are used for making sheet piles, their design will get changed, their cross sections will be different, the methodology of installation would be different. So, truly speaking, sheet piles are classified based on what is the function they are going to perform, alright, retention of what, different types of materials, okay. So, this is based on what is that you are trying to retain. This is the classification based on the type of material which is used, alright. You must have noticed that uh, in villages, particularly in parts of Rajasthan and other areas where stone is freely available, what they do? They make slabs of stones and they insert them into the ground. So, this could be made up of stones also. stones, slabs, all right, big rock mass, they will cut in small, small pieces uh, where they become slabs and these slabs are inserted into the soil mass. So, I think this is what the basics are. Sorry, ah, it could be concrete also, yes, very right. So, this could be made up of concrete also, yes. So, here you can put one more category as concrete, true, thank you.